Hey, how's it going? So I've arrived in Odessa, and Odessa has gone through a lot of troubles in the recent few days. There are loud explosions lighting up the sky in Odessa. Infrastructure in the port facilities of Odessa and other ports in the south uh, have been particularly targeted uh, throughout uh, recent days. So we've had the cathedral that has been attacked. I'm going to take you there in a moment. Precision uh, Onyx missiles and also caliber cruise missiles fired from the uh, offshore on the, on the Black Sea. Just to show those stupid idiots, and I really do mean this when I say stupid idiots, who seem to think this whole thing is a fake war. I've seen videos of people going, oh, they're picking up polystyrene blocks inside the cathedral. There is a superwoman, actually a couple of superwomen. These women are super strength. They're over here picking up concrete slabs and carrying them like they're groceries. Here's the clip. Watch this. <laughs> what is, uh... So, <laughs> um, <laughs> so the objective is to probably get fake news. Well, we're going to go to that cathedral. We're going to have a look. Just a quick heads up. This is Adam Miskiewicz. Adam Miskiewicz, you may remember from my Poznan video. Remember the video 24 hours in Poznan. Polish writer, poet, probably the most famous Polish writer, poet. He entered this part of the world back in the day via St. Petersburg, and then he went down into Odessa, where he spent nine months in Odessa, this very spot where he taught various subjects. I imagine poetry, linguistic subjects, and he was much celebrated for the fact that he was a little bit of a dissident, but much celebrated and much loved by those that love poetry. This statue was put up in 2004. It's a beautiful statue, although I think he looks a little bit feminine, if you ask me, but maybe because he was. This is actually, it's not a suit. This is a feminine undergarment. Just behind me is the monument to Gregory Marazli. He was Greek and he moved to Odessa because he fell in love with the place. And he fell in love with the place so much that he actually became mayor in the late 19th century. And he is probably one of the icons or figures of Odessa history that made Odessa what it is. He was responsible for much of the beautiful buildings that you will have seen in my previous videos, An Englishman in Odessa, part one and part two. Yes, honors our classmate copies and I saw one. What we're going to do now is we're going to walk towards the main tourist street. This is the only way to describe the street. It's Cobbled Street. And then as we walk up that street, I just want to show you just how much life has changed, despite the fact that this used to be a very bustling area. It's a great day in July. July would be normally tourist central in Odessa. Right now, we have very few people here. A lot of people have fled Odessa, and for good reason. They're, they are under attack every night. Like I said, in my past video, Odessa was attacked by 37 missiles last night, some of which were cruise missiles. And then on top of those 37, I think there was another seven Iranian drones that came from a submarine, which hit the port in probably less than half a mile from here and killed a security guard, damaged buildings. This is what we're having to deal with. The first time I visited Odessa was in 2013. I was here for a brief romantic weekend with, at the time, a, a lady friend, shall we say. And the last time I made any videos in Odessa was way back in 2018. So you will have to forgive me, despite the fact that I've been back. I was back here in 2020 and also 2021 and 2022. I didn't actually make any new videos in Odessa. I really should be more active with this channel. So those that have stood the test of time and have been with me since the early days, I am very, very grateful that you're still here and, and along for the journey. This whole area used to be bustling, it used to be full of drinkers, it used to be full of people eating nice food. Now it looks a little bit ghost town. In this video we do make our way to the Odessa Cathedral, so stick with us and you'll get to see the damage inflicted upon the cathedral by the Russian terrorist state, the Russian invaders. Got a great place to get some cheap cocktails, cheap beers. What I remember during the daytime is a good place to have a few drinks. Just consider this is a Friday in the summer in Odessa. It used to be one of Ukraine's most popular destinations in the summer, and now it is a shadow of its former self. Just over here used to be one of my favorite restaurants. It's almost looks like it's gone out of business. This was traditional Ukrainian cuisine. Now obviously there is a war going on, so you would expect to see the decimation that in a way we are seeing. But I guess when you travel to a place, it brings it all home. 
as you can see, art has been put up to sort of, sort of brighten up the fact that this building has gone out of business along with all of this. Here it says no to the, the Nazi occupiers. Now while watching this and noting some of the art and some of the art may be controversial, some of it may not be controversial, you have to realize that the people that have put these works up have had their country invaded, they've lost friends and family, they may have lost their livelihoods, and they may have even lost all of their possessions and their homes. So you have to understand sometimes the art or the political message won't be politically correct. And that, in my mind, is fair and justified. If you disagree, let me know. I'm honestly all ears, and as you know, I always respond to these comments. So leave a comment below and let me know what you think on this situation and the art. A mixed array of art. We're going to head up here and then we're going to head towards the cathedral. Despite businesses clearly having gone out of business and this was a beautiful shopping area, there are still little cars we, she can take tourists to, but as you can see, Swarovski gone out of business. Actually. Swarovski is still in business. I presume the windows have been damaged, potentially, well, any reason, the blast happened just over here. And yes, I later found out that is the reason the glass is not there. There's many, many buildings around this area that lost their glass when the missiles hit the cathedral. A lot of windows were smashed and a lot of debris. And over the next few days, many, many businesses were having to fix their broken windows if they were still in business. As best they can, life tries to continue on, to battle on, despite these beautiful buildings that once were home to people having coffees, dinners, lunches, breakfasts. Now all we have a, a fleeting number of locals still here. This chap here is Leonid Utasov. He was born in the Soviet Union in the late 19th century, I think around the 1890s. He lived until 1982, celebrated Soviet icon, a huge popular singer, happens to be also Jewish. And despite the fact that all these people on the right seem to think that Ukraine is run by Nazis, it simply isn't true. There are many Jewish monuments all over Ukraine, this being one of them, and this is Leonard, and he's right here in the middle of Odessa, probably on what was, up until 2022, Odessa's busiest street. Now, you might see a few people roaming around now, but it really doesn't look like much right now. Everything's faded, this place has seen far better times. It's almost like the days of COVID, except without the masks, and people just wondering when the next attack is gonna come. Now, of course, I never lived through the Blitz, but one can only imagine that, that the way the spirit of the Ukrainian people is throughout the country is probably similar to those fighting Brits back in the early 1940s. You can imagine it could be a struggle for any business to try and survive in a sort of environment like this. While a lot of Ukrainians have fled to Europe, well, North America as well, and parts of Asia, many have decided to stay. Many of those in the east decided to stay. They came to Odessa, they, they went to Lviv, they went to Kyiv. They just thought at least it's a little bit safer and away from the front line. However, are they going to have to start changing their minds soon as the Russians decide to keep pushing through and keep getting a little bit more aggressive? What we're going to witness is Russian aggression in a moment. As we leave Deri Basivka Street, and I'm brutalizing that, I know, we enter what is known as the Odessa Passage, also known to some as Meldovich Passage. It was built in 1899, and it is a rather beautiful passage. 
See, life continues on. We've just had someone just get married, but life continues on. Though looking rather shabby, uh, it still holds its beauty. Inside, there's four floors. Many of these floors used to have little boutiques. Uh, from my understanding was there's a hotel inside this passage, but I don't think much of this is functioning anymore. I'll try and stay away from that out of that picture. Beautiful couple. But what's more amazing is this 19th century shopping place. Although it was good to see the coffee shops at the end still reasonably busy, considering. So what you've got to realize is how close we are to this historical place as we go through this tunnel. First signs of the cathedral. Now you might remember from my uh, Englishman in Odessa videos, all of these places were witnessed in this video. When I was last in this cathedral, they had a small service going on. But I want you to sort of pay attention to what's going on in this cathedral. We'll give you a little bit of background on this cathedral. The Spazo pre Brazhensky Cathedral, also known as the Transfiguration Cathedral, is a significant architectural and religious monument located right in the center of Odessa. It held, and it still does hold, historical and cultural importance, attracting both tourists and worshippers alike. The original cathedral was constructed during the 18th century, a time of rapid development and growth for the city of Odessa. The cathedral was built in the Russian Baroque architectural style, which was prevalent during the period. Now, construction began in 1794, and the cathedral was finally consecrated in 1808. The construction was sponsored by the city's wealthy merchants and residents, showcasing their commitment to both religious and civic life. The cathedral's design masterfully melds Baroque and neoclassical elements, culminating in a harmonious masterpiece. Its exterior showcased intricate stucco embellishments, elaborate facades, and domes that aspired towards the heavens. At the helm, the main dome proudly bore the traditional Russian Orthodox cross, accompanied by smaller domes that collectively enhance the cathedral's grandeur. Architectural amalgamation eloquently pays homage to both European and Byzantine influences. The cathedral's exterior unfolds as a tableau of opulence bedecked with pilasters, arches and sculptures harmoniously entwined. Stucco embellishments narrate stories of revered figures, botanical motives and intricate patterns against the backdrop of the sky. The cathedral's ivory tones and light facade crafted an awe-inspiring visual spectacle, etching an indelible memory. Right beside the cathedral we see the remnants of the explosion that damaged the windows here. You can see broken windows, broken windows, but what is more shocking is every single window is broken here. You can see the damage that was inflicted upon the place. For the Orthodox Christian community in Odessa, the Spazo Presbrazhansky Cathedral served as a spiritual sanctuary. As the primary cathedral of Odessa and the Ismail Eparchy of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, it resonated with divinity during liturgical celebrations, baptisms, weddings and other sacred events. The cathedral's presence, entwined with its spiritual fabric of the city, provided a steadfast anchor. As you can see, more windows over here, completely broken. Despite the atrocious nature of this attack by the Russians, this wouldn't be the first time that this location has suffered immense damage. For example, in the mid-20th century, during the height of the Soviet anti-religious campaigns, the cathedral suffered desecration, neglect, and ultimately demolition. Religious icons, frescoes, and artifacts that adorn the interior 
were likely removed or destroyed. The cathedral itself, with its rich history and cultural significance, was reduced to ruins. World War II, also known as the Great Patriotic War in the Soviet Union, also had a significant impact on Odessa and its architectural treasures. The city was occupied by Nazi forces, resulting in substantial damage to its infrastructure. This looks like the doors to the church. You see how it's all been boarded off. Doors haven't been rescued, they've just been sort of left. Everything's going to be need to be replaced. Yeah. Oh. It's fake. It's fake. This is fake in terms of light. What mama? What mama? Marble. While it is unclear if the cathedral was directly targeted during this time, the wartime conditions likely exasperated its deterioration. After decades of neglect and destruction, the revival of the cathedral began after the dissolution of the Soviet Union. In 1991, when the newfound freedom to practice religion and restore cultural heritage, efforts were initiated to rebuild the cathedral. Through the collective determination of religious communities, local authorities and preservationists, reconstruction commenced. The reconstruction process aimed to recreate the cathedral's original splendor while incorporating modern engineering and architectural practices. The project involved extensive research, historical documentation and skilled craftsmanship to ensure the cathedral's authenticity. It was a labour of love and dedication, symbolising the resilience of both the faith and the community. In 1999, the Spazo Pre Brazensky Cathedral was officially reconsecrated and reopened for worship and cultural appreciation. The rebuilt cathedral stood as a living testament to the unwavering spirit of the community, the revival of the cultural heritage and the triumph of the faith over adversity. Just last night, we saw Russia use four different kinds of cruise missiles, long-range strategic bombers. They fired all of these drones. At least three people were killed last night in both the city of Mykolaiv and here in the city uh, of Odessa. Ukrainian authorities described the following onslaught as hellish. In the past, stepping inside the cathedral's inner sanctuary is akin to stepping into the ethereal realm of reverence and magnificence. That's why stepping into the cathedral post the attack was truly heart-wrenching. It was a privilege to be let into the cathedral by the priests and the volunteers who were there. They insisted I should go in to document to the world what had happened. Surprisingly, as I mentioned at the start of the video, there are those idiots in the West that still seem to think the war in Ukraine is a fake war. It really is safe to say that they are on the far left of the bell curve. The rebuilt cathedral that we see charred and destroyed right now was hit during a Russian airstrike on the city on the 23rd of July 2023. The missile blew a large hole in the roof, collapsed the altar and left several walls charred by fire. I hope at least with this brief footage it gives you some idea of the damage that has been inflicted upon the cathedral, Odessa and the people of Ukraine. The night this happened, it was one of several strikes on the southern port city in the early hours. Schools, residential buildings and a revered 19th century mansion also suffered damage. One person was killed and 14 others were hospitalized. Since this attack, Odessa has been attacked several times and many others have died. While I was in the city, a security guard died from an airborne attack. A shopping mall that employed people with learning disabilities was destroyed while I was editing this video. Every day Russia terrorizes the people of Ukraine. And for what? To stop NATO encroaching? 
to rid Ukraine of Nazis, even though I've met more on the streets of London than I have in 10 years in Ukraine. Whatever Putin's warped reasons are for attacking Ukraine, none of those reasons are justified, and I call once again on the people of Russia to rise up and demand Russia pull out of Ukraine, and I demand that we continue to stand with Ukraine, as it's only the people who are suffering, despite the huge profits BlackRock and Chums are making out of this horrific war. When the cathedral was rebuilt for the second time in 1999, much of the material used was for fillers. This is why some of the internal structure is made of a light polystyrene material. This was fairly common for Orthodox churches and cathedrals in the 1990s and into the 21st century because it was cheap material. In the same way cultures paint things gold, we don't expect that to be real gold. The same is true of many Russian Orthodox buildings. See? Super light. Super light. I pray that the cathedral is rebuilt and when it's finished it will be more glorious than ever. One, to show the Russians that Ukraine will not be defeated and two, to give the city back its beautiful cathedral as it acts as a magnet for worshippers and visitors from around the world. So I wanted to dispel this ridiculous myth that there's fake material inside the church. What churches, especially Orthodox churches, are made of, sometimes marble, sometimes very light material, as you can see there. Much of that material is a very light weight, so you could effectively pick it up in your hands. That doesn't dispel the fact that this entire cathedral was targeted, even if it wasn't targeted, it was hit people's lives have been ruined. Thankfully, nobody died inside. A place that millions of people over the years have worshipped in and hundreds of people, if not thousands, worship at every single day. Thank you, Odessa, for allowing me inside your cathedral in this troubled time. If you like this content, click that like button, click that subscribe button, and hopefully I will see you in the next video. Until next time, Slava Ukraini. Похилилася чогось наша славна Україна зажурилася, а ми тую червону калину підіймемо, а ми нашу славну Україну хе-хе розвеселимо.